Welcome to Classic Series on the NHL Network. I'm Dan Pollard. Today we take a look back at the 1993 Wales Conference Final between the New York Islanders and the Montreal Canadiens. Both teams had finished third in their respective divisions during the season and were surprises to have reached the Final Four. The Islanders were coming off a shocking seven-game upset over the two-time defending champion and 93 President's Trophy winners, the Pittsburgh Penguins. David Volek scored in overtime in Game 7 to put the Islanders in the conference final for the first time since 1984. What made the outcome even more surprising was that the Islanders played the first six games of the series without their points leader, Pierre Turgeon. He had been injured by a vicious hit by Dale Hunter in the final game of the opening round. Ray Ferraro had scored eight goals in the opening round against the Capitals and four more against the Pens. His 12 goals led the team. Glenn Healy was enjoying the best postseason of his career. He had won only two playoff games prior to 93, and already he had won eight games, including four in overtime, through two rounds. The Montreal Canadiens were in the conference final. The Canadiens had been off for eight days before the series began, a product of their sweep of the Buffalo Sabres. On the other hand, the Islanders were playing their second game in less than 48 hours. Having won Game 7 in Pittsburgh on Friday night, the series against the Canadians began Sunday afternoon in Montreal. The big question was whether New York would be too fatigued both mentally and physically to beat the rested Habs. These teams played four times during the regular season. The Canadians won three, and the Islanders won. Pierre Turja in the middle of your screen, sitting this one out after suiting up and playing very briefly in the big game seven win in Pittsburgh. Cross ice to Kevin Holler. Here's Holler to the line. Nice move. Holler in, and Healy made the save short side. 13,526 at the forum. Tom Foose in front loose. Buck Muller out of the net. Healy. Net wide open and Healy dove back and got a piece of it. Kurt Muller beats Healy to the puck. Takes a swing and in comes Mullen, in comes Wazell. LeClaire behind up front. Lebeau behind the goal. Centers it, Tom Foose. Healy got a piece of that. Save his biggest of the night to keep this one at two zip. He missed the pass out from the corner and it went to Don Foose, so Healy slid across and made. Sitting out this third period, but. No reflection on his play. Mark Fitzpatrick has played very well for the Islanders this year. He was a Bill Masterson winner. Savar centers in front, Di Pietro, and Fitzpatrick had to be alert there with Di Pietro cruising through the goal crease. And you could tell here early in the third, it wouldn't take much. Milan and Dion. Okay, John, is this going to do anything for the Islanders? Now here we go. Oh, and Wayne Bonney gets in. Oh. First fight of the playoffs for the Canadians. I think this will do be a positive effect for the Islanders because to the, today they really haven't been involved in this game. And now, even though it's just only in the physical department, they are involved. Lakota and Oldline are already in the penalty box, and now everybody else on the ice in the partner. One question left in this opening game now. King works in, and his shot deflects high off the glass. Bullock behind the net. Bullock, Kasparaitis the shot high. Off the backboard, loose, Kasparaitis, wall the save. Ferraro scores! And that question has been answered. Now Patrick missed it by 67 seconds. And it's 4-1 to one, Montreal. The Islanders had given up the first goal six times in their seven-game playoff series with the Pittsburgh Penguins. But against the offensively-minded Pens, they had been able to rally. However, game one against the Canadians taught them a valuable lesson. Montreal's tight checking style made playing from behind nearly impossible. The Isles got some good news before Game 2, however. Pierre Turgeon and Pat Flatley returned to the Isles lineup, and it was hoped that they could provide an emotional lift as well as some offensive skill to help solve the red-hot Patrick Waugh. Gilbert Dion opened the scoring in Game 1. Here's LeBeau. Stefan LeBeau shot. It's behind Healy, and he'll cover up. Close call there, but Glenn Healy makes the save on Stefan LeBeau. On the left side, Muller tripped up as he went to the net. Savar spins, shot, Healy saved, LeClaire rebound. Healy down, and 
somehow the puck stayed out. Behind King Curvers goes deep into the corner. Thomas shot, and save, rebound. Terjan, great stop by Patrick Waugh. He's lost his goal stick. Malakov in front, they score! Pierre Terjan. And what a super pass by Malakoff to find Terjan through the crowd. And it's 1-0 New York. Let's see, here's one. Gets the leg on it. Look at Patrick Waugh. Struggled to get in position. There's two. And Pierre Turgeon. Watch Turgeon get in position here for the tip. And again, wave for the puck. Well, gentlemen, we're looking at a different New York Islanders team here tonight. We talked about their lack of time to rest up after the Penguins from Friday night to Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. They've had 48 hours plus now to get ready for this one, game two. Now the Canadians start back. Three of them, Dom Keen and LeBeau. Here's LeBeau's shot and a glove stop by Healy. Brunetum. They look at Steve Thomas and he has to put some numbers on the board for this Islander. Both teams again change as Thomas tries to skate out. Here's Thomas, shot scores! Steve Thomas has tied it for the Islanders. So we're tied with under 10 minutes to go in the third period. Tied at two. As Steve Thomas gets his seventh of the year. Here's Samar's shot. Big stop, Healy. 77 skates to center. Right side, Delgarno. In the middle, Terjean. Right in on goal. They score. Islanders lead. Foose to Muller. 30 seconds left. Here's Don Foose. And Bellows. Healy with the glove stop. And a beauty. Save of the game. We are going Many wondered if the Islanders would be able to bounce back from the devastating loss in Game 2. They had shown heart during their playoff run, overcoming Turgeon's injury, rallying from behind in each of their previous two series, but they had never been down two games, and they had not yet faced a team as hot as the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal had now won 10 straight playoff games, one shy of the record. The Habs were so confident they seemed to be playing for overtime in Game 3 in Long Island, was no exception. Tonight, gentlemen, the New York Islanders are playing game number 100 this season. Regular season and playoffs. Where they can hear Chuck and turned back by Kerbers. Muller is hit by Bolick. And so some good hitting by either side in the opening eight minutes of this game. Canadians will be called for icing. Still no score, 8.04 gone. Al Harper says that Pierre Turgeon was about 85% in game two. Here's Delgarno deep in the zone. Turgeon shot scores! Looked 100% on that play. David Bullock starts it with a nice little pass to Brad Delgarno. The Canadians' coverage isn't bad, but they don't take Turgeon's stick. Look at Kevin Holler. He's right there, but he doesn't have Turgeon's stick. And now, Kirk Muller strikes back to Montreal. Muller held up at the line, but Bellows moving in, sweeping in, Healy down! And they'll cover up. John lost his balance. Bellows still out there, Deep Pietro, the other Canadian forward. Here he comes in front, and it was off the skate, and Bellows was drilled into the net by Brad Delgarno. Fitzgerald again against Di Pietro. Canadians get control. Desjardins shot, plus save, Healy. Burton. And the fans salute the Islander goaltender, Rune. Judge for yourself, did they or didn't they have too many men on the ice just before Guy Carboneau's winning goal in overtime? Well, Al Arbor certainly had his thoughts on the whole affair after Thursday night's game. Well, I think it's very apparent in the last couple of games here that there are two sets of rules. There's a rule regarding the Montreal Canadian and there's a rule regarding everybody else. A day later after thinking about it, Arbor watched his players going through their paces and decided to treat the whole affair in a casual and facetious way. I uh, made a statement last night and that's done with and we're just moving on. The coaches uh, might have a touch of Alzheimer's disease, but I don't recall exactly my words. But... Jacques Demers met the press corps in Uniondale and said that he wasn't about to stir the pot. You know what? There was too many men on the ice. But there was also in the first period too many men on the ice for the Islanders. And we were at the bench. We weren't in the play. But Al Arbor is uh, 
a man I have too much respect for to judge whatever Hal Arbor has to say. To, that's him, and I'm not going to uh, judge Al Arbor. In 1975, the Islanders were in a similar situation against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Down three games, but they did come back, and Arbor is hoping that the magic is still there. You know, this is not an impossible task. A lot of people say this is impossible. I don't, I don't, I don't see anything impossible about it. You go through the course of the season and you win four games, no big deal. Why should it be a big deal in the playoffs? Montreal is 11 They can go and lose four now. Michael Whalen, TSN, in Uniondale, New York. Arbor's words aside, the odds of a comeback were indeed long. Montreal seemed poised to sweep the Islanders and in the process set a record with their 12th straight win in a row. But the Islanders had not been swept in a seven-game series in franchise history and were not about to start now. Oh, here come the Islanders. There's a capacity crowd here tonight, and we'll let the crowd bring them on here for just a minute. Everybody on their feet at the Coliseum. Darius Kasparaitis hitting the line, drops it off, then a home shot right on, and Patrick Waugh covers up three minutes in to game four. Patrick with the goals against average in this series of 1.37. Still no score, 9.23 into this one. Jacques Demers has been here before. This is the second time that he has been one victory away from coaching his team into the Stanley Cup final. He didn't make it the previous time, 1986. Flatly side of the net, Ferraro in front. Great Ferraro, ball down, what a stop. Rebound, Flatly doesn't get through. Ferraro does a good job, he waits, he waits, and look at what. He gets a glove up at the last minute to knock that one down. Savar, his pass, and it's broken up. Dion gets another chance. Schubert Dion. Savar flipped it. Oh, what a stop by Healy, as Denny Savar was looking for his first goal of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Score, first period in game four of the Wales Conference Championship Series. With 4.25 to go, here's David Bullock shot right on. And Patrick Waugh covers that. Here's Hogue. Benoit Holt centers, Thomas shot, Patrick Wall the save and another, and he'll cover up as Ferraro is flattened at the side of the net. Stops he has made tonight, two more right there. <laughs> and you can see even he's shaking his head to save three bounces here. One tip, two tips, and then to Patrick Waugh. Jeff Norton has the rebound, and Waugh is so quick getting across. Desjardins skating out to center ice for Montreal. Clears it in, there's Keen, first man to it, and Di Pietro going to the net. Don Fluce looks for a loose puck, shot, Di Pietro scores! Paul Di Pietro with his first goal on the road in these playoffs, and the Canadians lead 1-0. Here's Thomas on the left wing, his shot blocked. Going in deep, Thomas behind the goal, coming out in front, the shot, scores! Short side, Steve Thomas. Now Flatley, sending away Ferraro. Here's Ray Ferraro. Taking a look back in front, they score! Cotton Flatley! There's the turnover just inside the blue line as Di Pietro tried to shoot it in. The rush up ice, the pass by Ferrero, the redirection by Flatley. New York leads. Halfway through this third period, Montreal has to do something right now they have not done, obviously, in the games here. Score some goals. Two with an overtime game in game three, and just one here tonight. Almost 10 minutes into the third period. Fitzgerald hit the line. Rob Fitzgerald takes a look. Cross ice. Uwe Krupp moving in. Here's Krupp backhand. Patrick Law rebound. They score. David Bullock. It feels a little different about young Mr. Bullock right now after some recent events. Here's a giveaway. Muller in and a high shot. Handled by Heal. Check out how it happened here. Stick up by Lyle Odeline. Odeline stick cut Ferrero across the side of the head. As you can see, there's not much contact until after Odeline spins around. And right there, oh, you can it. see the stick right in the back of the head. With two minutes and 49 seconds left, the Islanders have a two goal lead on the Canadians, whose scoring has dried up. Tom Fitzgerald working in. Freeze ball the save. Casparitis backhand, and that's kept out. Here's Benoit Hogue, empty net score. The streak's over, and the Islanders are still alive. 
Obviously, you know, they don't want to quit. Yeah, the little things, uh, you know, they, they have a saying, uh, take care of the little things, the big things will take care of itself. But I think overall it was a great team effort and we had a meeting yesterday and said uh, if we try to go individually here, we, we have no prayer against this team. We have to all stick together and, and play well collectively and everybody does his job and uh, we need, uh, you know, guys to come through for us. We crashed in it tonight, and that was our main focus: is to, you know, get the puck on the wall and uh, move it right to the net. And I think, you know, if you see the goals we had, uh, Pat Flatley's goal, Dave Vos goal, it was somebody crashing net all the time, and, and I think that's the way to get to Patrick Roy. I think we felt a little relaxed and we were more prepared. Uh, you know, back against the wall, we've done it against Pittsburgh, and uh, the guys say it can't happen right now. We we got to keep going, and take shift by shift, and play hard. And uh, I think we control most of the game and our RD uh, jump up offensively and uh, creates opening in the slot and uh, we finally uh, put it past Project Law. Uh, absolutely, we want to win this series in a big way uh, uh, and there isn't one guy in this dressing room who doesn't think we can. Uh, uh, we've got a bunch of guys who are, uh, are focused with a bunch of guys with big hearts and uh, it's, it's fun to see. Now, crashing the net, was that part of the game plan tonight? Obviously, that's how the goals all, all seem to occur. Well, absolutely. That was, uh, that was one of our, our main concerns is uh, getting to the net and uh, getting shots on net, going for rebounds, and, uh, and uh, trying to cause some havoc in front for Patrick. One big reason that the Islanders were so effective in game four of this series is that defenseman Uwe Krupp was an imposing presence in the game. The six foot six native of Cologne, West Germany, was freewheeling it in the offensive zone, and he made things happen. It was undoubtedly his best game ever in 40 playoff appearances. I think it was the most uh, most rewarding. You you know you play good games sometimes, but uh, uh, things just don't work out at the end. Uh, you know as as good as you wanted to. But the uh, last game we won, um, I was able to uh, put a good game on, and uh, you know so it was a it was a good game for me. He's like a, a big quiet man out there. He's very effective in, in our own zone, and he, like last night you saw him. He can be very good offensively. Also, he carried the puck very well. Uh, he does seem to do everything uh, real well in a very quiet fashion. He's awesome. I never realized how good he was. He's very, very good. I mean, he's a dominating defenseman. And you can't take him out of the way. He's so big. He's not overly physical. I'm talking about not cheap shots. He never gives you a cheap shot. He plays a real clean game. He dominates both offense and defense. He's been a very strong player for them. The Bears also singled out Darius Kasparaitis for his play in Game 4. In fact, he says stopping those two defensemen will be the key strategy for his club as they approach Game 5. Michael Whalen, TSN in Montreal. The Islanders had won Game 4 on the strength of three unanswered third-period goals, reminding everyone they would not go down without a fight. So are on their way, it would appear, to the Stanley Cup Final. Here's the... So Dom Poos, the lone assist on the fifth Canadian's goal. Here's King in. Patrick Wong in. Rebound. Turgeon rolled it wide. Islanders center it through the crease. Thomas scores. Well, the Islanders don't quit. Steve Thomas comes back. And they finally get on the board. Muller, first man to it. Fitzgerald got his stick on it. Pilon, it comes out in front. Muller, Healy down on the line. And it stayed out. Muller again shoots. That hit Kasparaitis in the back. I think. McInnes off his skate to his stick. There's Tom Kerbers moving up. Drops for McInnes in front. Hogue scores! Benoit Hogue! And it's 